Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Are you, are you sick of looking at Netflix and you don't know what to watch? So many movies out there, you don't know which ones are good, which ones were bad. You curious about what's out there? I'm Joey Powers. I'm Don Trettler. This is the best pictures. The ones you don't want to miss. Get it. Say hello to my little friend. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Winners go home and prom queen. English, mother do you speak it? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I don't deserve this. The serves got nothing to do with it. No sequel for you. Welcome to another episode of The Best Pictures. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Powers. Hey, and I'm Don Trettler. Welcome to the show. And we're back on 80s. Um, I mean, I, I, I've said it a few times. Um, I think this was the, the best quality decade. For, I forgot I still have this stupid thing on. The like, best a, co- like the golden age. Golden age yeah. of, uh, of movies. I mean, there are so many classics. And I, I counted. Of all this list, I think I don't own six. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, that's it's quite a it's quite an impressive list. Um, you know, and another thing I was thinking too is who was the biggest star? Do you think of the eighties? Oh, that's tough. Because Tom Cruise really got big between um, Top Gun. Yep. What's the one before that with the uh, the dancing scene where he's in his underwear? Oh yeah. Um, that's what really started him off. Oh, oh, I can't think of it. I didn't write it down. I just thought of it just now. I got it. I, know uh, I, uh, I can't think of it. Pull my mic closer. How's that? Is that better? That's shocking. They had to pull Let's it closer. See, I know I wrote so it on loud. this list somewhere. Oh, the one you're talking that? about. Yeah. It's, it's not all the right moves. That was, no. That's the one where he was a football, football player. Football player, yeah. It's him in... Uh, How do we not know? Risky Business. Risky Business, yes. Him and Rebecca De Mornay. Right. So you had that. Then you had Top Gun, Rain Man. Yeah. Um, you know, so he had... He, uh, I was born on the fourth of July, eighty nine. I don't, I don't, I don't think I have that on my list. So I, I think it might have been ninety. I don't. Yes, yeah, so I it don't, might have been yeah. in the nineties. I um, was thinking Mel Gibson. I was gonna say Mel Gibson was really big. You know, the Lethal Weapon movies, um, uh, Road Warrior, Road Warrior, which kind of broke him into this country. Mm-hmm. That, was, that like, got hugely popular. What about like Bird on a Wire or Air America? Were either one of them eighties or were those? That probably, yeah. probably, yeah. That's that's what I was thinking. Oh, Tom Cruise, The Outsiders, another one, you know. I'm trying to think, who else was huge? I mean, the uh, Brad Pack, in general, as a collective, they were all pretty, you know, they had their, their movies. Yeah, that's a big one. When you think of 80s, you got to think of those John Hughes movies, mm-hmm. uh, Pretty in Pink. Yep. The um, Breakfast Club, St. Elmo's Fire, Weird Science, you know, I mean, they're all, all 80s classics. Um, I don't know, Kevin, Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner kinda, was pretty big. Kind of, yeah. You know, The Untouchables, uh, Field of Dreams, Bull Durham. Right. You know, I mean, so he, he right. was pretty big. All three of those guys at one time could probably have been considered the biggest star in the world, really, pretty much. Um, I'd say Jack Nicholson was pretty huge. Yeah. He had some pretty good years, yep. pretty good movies. What do you have? The, the Shining, 80s? Terms of Endearment, um, Prizzy's Honor. Yeah, what else do we have from him? Um, yeah, those, those are the ones I had down here, too. Yeah. <laughs> Batman. Batman, yeah. He, he was the Joker in Batman, which yep. kind of, it's interesting because at the time, that was a big deal. What? Uh, him being, ba- being oh, the Joker in Batman. Yeah. Because um, I remember, I've said this before on this show, I remember reading an article at the time leading up to uh, the production of Batman that they were looking at Jack Nicholson, Ray Liotta, yeah. and, um, oh shoot, I can't think of his was name. Harvey, Harvey? Harvey Keitel? Was that him? No, I don't no. th- think it was, that's not the guy I'm thinking of. It was um, from Platoon. Uh, Berenger? Or William Defoe? William Defoe. William Defoe. Who would have made, think about him, that would have been an interesting Joker. Mm-hmm. It would have been. All yeah. three of them, I think Ray Liotta would have been an interesting Joker as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, all three very gifted actors. 
I mean, Ray Liotta was in Goodfellas and Field of Dreams. Those were two really big movies that he had big roles in. Uh, De Niro. De Niro was big. Good, Goodfellas, Midnight, Midnight Run. Sure. You ever see that? Uh, oh, yeah. I haven't seen that movie in ages. That's one of my best friend's mom's favorite movie. Every time it was on, she would always call him to let him know that she was watching it. Casino? Was Casino in the 80s? No, Casino was 90s. Uh, Goodfellas, The Raging Bull, Midnight Run. Um, what's the one with him and uh, Jeremy Irons? The Mission. The Mission, right? The Mission. Um, yeah, he certainly was a big uh, box office. Oh, another Tom Cruise one, The Color of Money. Right. That was really, I really liked that movie a lot. I'm a big right. pool fan in general, but. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to say who was the actual, because I, I don't think there's a real answer, because it seems like it could have changed like every other year, pretty much, because they were all like really big. I think Tom Hanks made some movies, but I don't think he was huge until the 90s. Yeah, until big, big. Big and Splash. Um, I think Big was 80s, wasn't it? I think Big, yeah, Big. Big snuck in in 1989, yeah, so late 80s. Big but that was his kind of bust out, and then he's had his bigger roles. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was since Forrest Gump, Philadelphia, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. A couple of cold classics that are just stood the test of time. One, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Right. And um, two, Say Anything. Yeah, yeah, you I know? love that. I, mean, I love that one. Two, I mean, neither one of them turned out to be huge, um, but they were both – really uh, they were both remembered in the 80s for those two roles really i mean i mean there's the scene where he's holding up the the, the radio boom box, yeah. yeah the boom box and then ferris Bueller singing dong is scene and right s- twist and shout and is know. that john hughes too ferris Bueller? i think it might be to be honest with you. i didn't check but it's kind of like in that same vein it kind of goes along with some of those movies i um, actually know someone named ferris Bueller. wow yeah my boss one of my former boss's son she named it. Her last name was Bueller, and she's like, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Right. So yeah, his name is Sheriff Bueller. Um, yep, it was John Hughes. Seven point eight. That's really high. Oh, it is. It's a that's, super enjoyable movie. That's higher than Lean on Me. That's crazy. Well, I think that that's one right there. I mean, that could, if we were going to make a top ten list of movies that just exemplify the eighties. Yeah. Uh, I would say Ferris Bueller's Day Off was de- definitely could mm-hmm. could make top ten. Patrick Swayze had a couple. Pat Swayze. Dirty yeah. Dancing was huge. That's probably his biggest de- decade, right? Before Ghost. Yep. But Red Dawn was really good. I think Next of Kin was in the 80s, too, which was him and Liam Neeson. I oh. think that was 80s. I haven't seen it, but uh, Footloose. Footloose was Classic, huge. you know, right. I mean. To um, go along with that is Dirty Dancing. Oh, we just said Dirty yeah, Dancing. Yeah, Dirty Dancing, yeah. And then. Um, what's, the, what's the other dancing one? Uh, that was a flop with Jennifer Beals. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Flashdance. Flashdance, yeah. Didn't that, like, completely bomb? No, no, I think that must oh, have been... Oh, it didn't? I think it made money. Oh, I, I thought it bombed for some reason. I, I think know. it was... That was a small a small budget movie, like an independent movie. Yeah, that kind of took off. I think it did. So did she just didn't... Because she never really panned out after that, really. Like No, she didn't. Because she... Most, if, most people, when they're in a movie that are big like that... And when I thought about that, I thought about the movie Fame, too. Fame was pretty huge. Was Another one of those came is, out of nowhere. Is that in the 80s, too? Oh, definitely. Cause they, I think they did a remake on Fame. Did not they that, really? Not that long ago, yeah. That probably didn't do All as right. well. One of my favorites of the 80s, not necessarily my favorite, but one of my very favorites is Mask. Mask, yeah. I love that movie. 7.2, I think that's a little low. That's somebody who got huge in the 80s. Cher. Cher, yeah. She won an Oscar for uh, Moonstruck. Right. I think uh, Mermaids, was that the 80s? Her, her Winona Ryder? I didn't see that. I didn't see saw that. a little bit. But like you say, Mask. Yeah, Mask. Mask, moon, um, Moonstruck. Moonstruck, yep. I wonder if Mask was nominated. Um, mask won one Oscar. I wonder what it won for. I don't think it was an acting Oscar. Makeup? Oh, probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm guessing you're probably right. Best makeup, yep. I think she might have gotten a nomination for that, too. Not an Oscar. She did get nom- nominated for Golden Globe, and so did um, Eric Stoltz for Supporting Actor, which I'm not really sure he qualified Supporting I think he would have been more of a lead actor, don't you? I would. I would have yeah. thought so. I mean, they're both the, the stars. Right. And then you got Sam, Sam Elliott was great in that. He's, he's just fun in general. Yeah, he is. Um, was Roadhouse? Did we say Roadhouse? Was that in the 80s? 
Is Maybe it, I don't know. That would be another Patrick. I think Swayze of it as one. you think of it kind of like an eighties. Here's one. Throw out at you. Another one exemplifies the eighties. Blade Runner. Yeah, I have Huge that on movie. here. Yep. Right. Ridley That's, Scott. Yep. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. I mean, you got Raiders of the Lost Ark. You got uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi and Blade Runner. Right. I mean, I'm sure he probably had more. Too. You're right. He was probably huge in the one yep. of the biggest names in the '80s. Yep. I think that, I, and I think this one, Blade Runner, that might have been um, uh, his follow-up. Not not Harrison Ford's, but. Um, from Aliens. Oh, Ridley Scott? Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott probably did Aliens, was a huge hit, came out of nowhere, yep. really. And then he got a little bit more money and said, okay, I'm going to apply it to Blade Runner. And Blade Runner kind of took off as a cult classic. That was always yep. kind of regarded as like a masterpiece yep. movie. What about An Officer and a Gentleman? Oh, I love that movie. I haven't seen that out. in a long time. And no, I own it. I. And I just haven't seen it in forever. I mean, talk about career-defining performance by Louis Gossett Jr., huh? Right. He won, a ca he won the uh, Best Supporting, supporting Actor. Yeah. Event. He was phenomenal in that. I mean, I thought th the, the leads in it in general were all really good. I thought uh, Richard Gere was good. I thought um, Deborah Winger was good. Is David, David Keith, not Keith David, right? I always get him confused. Right, right. David, yeah, Keith David Keith was great, and I don't remember the girl that He played. coined the phrase, bodacious pair of tatas. <laughs> 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 um, Another another one that's a I, I I think of from my childhood as an absolute eighties classic was Arthur. Arthur, right? Dudley that Moore, didn't even make my list. Dudley Moore was so perfect in that role. I, I was so disappointed when they remade it with Russell Brand. Right. I wouldn't even watch it. I was like, I'm not wasting. My I time haven't on seen that. it. No, I didn't see the remake for that. But he was just he was he nailed it. It's like he was tailor made. I had one on here that's kind of like that, but it was actually 1979 ten. Ten. I love that too. I mean, right. he, he was just so good at like. That must have meant Arthur. Arthur must have been pretty early on then too. Right? I think it's eighty two. And um, eighty two. John uh, Gil. Yeah, yeah. John Gilgood. Right. I think was his uh, his butler. Yeah, he got he won best supporting actor, and he ah oh, they were just great. They had such good chemistry. Another good one, Tootsie. Tootsie, right? I haven't seen that in a long time. Oh, Dustin Hoffman must have had a few. Between Tootsie, Rain Man, I think Kramer versus Kramer was 79, though. Um, no, I mean, I had it for 1980. It won the Best Picture in 1980. E, but, it but it was, was made in 79 because they always have the ceremony the year after. Yeah. Which makes it tricky sometimes. What about broadcast news? Do you ever see that? I did at the time. I, I, I wasn't as high on that one. No. I had I, big I, expectations. I loved William Hurt. He was. I think he's a actor. very good actor. I oh, think yeah. he's very good. He is an Oscar for uh, Kiss of the Spider Woman in the 80s, you know? So he had he had a couple of big ones. He was big. That was probably his biggest decade. Oh, because yeah. Because he did that. He did um, Body Heat. Was he in, um, I don't think, he's not in The Big Chill, is he? Big Chill. Is yeah. he in The Big Chill? Okay. He's in The Big Chill. I still haven't seen that. Altered States. Oh, another Tom Cruise one, Cocktail. That was pretty big. Cocktail, yeah. That was good. Uh, Beetlejuice, classic cult following. Right. And that, and that was kind of the taking off for um, Tim Burton. Yep. Right? I mean, I don't think Tim Burton did anything big before that. Uh, not, that not that I can think I of. I think he did that one. Then he did Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. And that was big. That, that was, was huge. Yeah, yeah, that was huge. And that's when he kind of started his uh, working relationship with Donnie Depp because they've done a, lot of, done a lot of movies right. together over the years. Um, what about the Goonies? Goonies, has yeah. That's has a Jake big one. seen the Goonies? I'm sure he must have. I, I would like to think so. Seems that's, like I've watched it. That's a movie I, I I would watch tonight. You know, it's just such a fun movie. Right. You know? And that's one that people reference with newer movies. I just had seen a movie on Netflix called, um, it's called Ohana. It had, it had to do with this Hawaiian family that had relocated to New York, and they went back for family reasons to Hawaii. Yeah. And they found, like, they did the same thing. They were exploring caves. It was a mm -hmm. lot of shout outs to Goonies. To Goonies. I love it when they make the, the fat kid do the truffle shuffle. <laughs> I just love that. That's such a classic scene. Or when Carrie Green kisses uh, Sean Austin thinking it's Josh Brolin. Right. You know, that was kind of funny too. What about Weird Science? You ever see that? Weird Science, yeah, that was a fun one. Yep, that was good. A young Robert Downey Jr. in that. A really young Robert Downey Jr. God, that was. Here's weird. Die Hard, which we Not talk Die about Hard. a lot. Die Hard yep. is like one of the big action movies, maybe the, the biggest action movie. The best. I should say the best, maybe not the, the best, biggest. Right. You ever see The Dream Team? 
No, what's the dream team? Oh, you sh I'll bring that in for you so you can watch it. It's about four mental patients that get to go out to go into the city for a Yankees game with their psychiatrist, and he gets like attacked in an alleyway. It's it's a comedy. It's that they're all out on their own in New York City. It's uh, Michael Keaton, Christopher Lloyd. Uh, um, Did I see some of Peter this? Peter Boyle and Stephen First are the four. Uh, it's Peter Boyle walks into a church, fuck ass naked. Just, he's just walking right down there in the service, and he's naked. And Michael Michael Keaton's like a pathological liar. Um, <clears throat> You know, they're like riding into the city one day. He's like, yeah, there's the two towers. He's like, I built the first one. I was like, hey, you know, I'm here. I might as well build the second one. You know, just like stupid stuff like that. You know, they're like, you're going to be able to drive home okay? He's like, finish second at Daytona. <laughs> you know, just stupid one-liners like that. They're all Christopher uh, Lloyd thinks he's like the, the doctor's assistant. So he's got like the stethoscope and the white coat and all that stuff. And he's just a loon. They're all just lunatics. But it's, it's fun. It's a, it's a really fun movie. Because they're all really good comic yeah. actors, you know? I mean, yeah. and that was my, that Michael Keaton was pretty big, come to think of it. Because after that was, I think, the year before he got the role of Batman. Yeah, and, and, and like we said. And Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Yeah, so, um, I mean, 80s were pretty good to him. Right. You know, and he, he was gone for a while. But then he's kind of made a comeback recently. You know, he was in that Birdman movie. Right. Um, he's been doing some supporting, supporting stuff. Supporting stuff, yeah. He definitely. was in that... Uh, uh, the Trial of the Chicago 7. Yep, yep. I was Had just going to say something I just saw he was in. Yeah, he was a big, it, kind of a juicy role in that, but a supporting role. Yeah. Um, I feel like most of the roles in that were all kind of supporting roles. It didn't really seem like there was one, like, standout lead. Uh, no. E.T. 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 was a classic. Is Huge. a classic, I should say. And the movie that always goes along with that in my mind, weirdly, is The Thing. The Thing, I got that written down here. E.T. was so huge when it came out that we went to the theater and we couldn't get in, it was sold out. So we went to the next theater over. And the thing was playing? And saw the thing. I, I saw E.T., I think I was either three or four. It was my best friend's fifth grade. Yeah, I was four, I think. Because it was my best friend's fourth grade. I don't remember. I was either three or four, but anyway, it was for his birthday party. And I actually cried when I thought E.T. died. <laughs> you know? But I can is, imagine. That is a classic movie, you know? I mean, it. Here's, here's one, uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh, I cannot believe I don't have that on my list. Oh, have yeah, it vaulted, vaulted Sean Penn into stardom. Oh, my God, that was, um, that was a movie I honestly could say he should have, he could have, could have been nominated for Best Actor for that because that's not Sean Penn, you know? But he nailed Spicoli. He did. So bad, absolutely. I just bought that. I just found a three- it had three movies on it, um, on this disc. Yep. It was Animal House, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and um, Dazed and Confused. Oh, I found it for $2. That is Mr. a keeper G's. right there, man. So I was like, oh, I got to get this because I've never seen Dazed, Dazed and, and Confused. Dazed and Confused. That's, is that 80s? That might be 90s. Could be. I think, I think it might be 90s. That is an absolute classic. I right? was just like, well, I haven't seen Fast Times at Ridgemont High in years. And oh, my God. I can always watch Animal House again. Dazed and Confused, yeah, it was 93. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a money uh, DVD right there. For $2? That's like stealing. I own all three of those, and I bet I paid, like, probably close to 30 40 bucks for all three of them. It's still worth it to me. Right. Absolutely. Um, obviously, we mentioned Lethal Weapon, but those, those, those movies were big. I think one in – did two come out in the 80s, too? I, I think, think so. I think one was 87, and I think two might have been 89. And then you had three and four in the 90s. Yeah, I, I didn't write down the... See, I didn't write down the years for Dead Poets Society. Right? You ended up watching that, right? Just recently, what I've did, seen it. What did you think? Oh, I liked it a lot. I thought it was a really good movie. Yeah. You know, I mean, and something that... At the time, Robin Williams hadn't done a lot of serious stuff. You know, he had done more after. Um, but I think that, that might have been one of his first serious roles. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, that's coming off the heels of... Uh, which I don't think I wrote on here. Good Morning Vietnam. Which was a right. classic. I mean, that was a real. I mean, that had some seriousness in it, dealing with the theme. But it was really him being a, com a comedian on the radio to all the soldiers. Um, yeah, and like I said before, I mean, I always liked Robin Williams 
better in the straight roles than I do in the comedies. Me, me too. I never cared for his comedy all that much. But I mean, that just tells you how good he is that he could cross over like that. I mean, I like Mrs. Doubtfire a lot. Um, and I like Good, Will, uh, uh, good Morning Vietnam. But I mean, I mean, his best performance to me is still Goodwill Hunting, you know. Um, right. Uh, he's very good in uh, that, uh, Dead, Dead Poets Society. I don't know how we've gone this far without mentioning Platoon, Platoon. Or, or Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. You know, I mean. Well, Platoon might be to- could be one of the top ten movies. Now, I'm sure that got nominated for Academy Award. It won for Best year. Picture. Yeah. It won Best Picture. Be. Oliver Stone won Best Director. The two uh, sergeants, uh, Willem Dafoe and uh, Tom Berenger, were both nominated for Supporting Actor. It won four Oscars. They, prob- they probably balanced each other off. They probably did. I think we looked it up one time and we were surprised. Didn't we? That who won that year? I, I don't think it was Michael Caine. It's a great ensemble cast. They had both of them. Charlie Sheen, who was pretty much the lead of the movie. Yep. Um, I mean, Johnny Depp has like a bit had, part. Had Matt Dillon's brother. Kevin uh, Dillon, yep. Kevin Dillon. Um, it had the other guy. Instead of having David Keith, it had Keith David. Yeah. <laughs> Keith David was in the movie. Uh, Keith David has a great voice. Yes, he does. So if people, if you guys don't know who Keith David is, you'll, you would definitely know his voice because they use it. They use it for commercials and stuff. And oh yeah, uh, he is, just has a tremendous voice. I think he played Othello on Broadway. Really? Yeah, he's. He was in the thing. He got into a couple of John Carpenter movies. He was in the thing, and he was also in They Live, and they had that great. I think it's a classic fight scene with Rowdy Roddy Piper. The two of these guys have a fight scene that goes on so long you almost get sick of it. But I like it because both of these guys are, are fighting for something. They're both good guys. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's the whole premise. So, this, so neither one is a bad guy because I think you'd be sick of, a, sick of a fight if they were bad guys. But they're two guys. And you can see from both point of views, they both want to win. And you kind of want both of them to win. Right, right. You know? Mm-hmm. All right, so, okay, I do remember this now. I was going to mention it, but I wanted to double-check, but I, I was right. So, then Holm Elliott was nominated for A Room with a View. Then listen to this. Tom Berenger, Platoon. Willem Dafoe, Platoon. Dennis Hopper for Hoosiers. And Michael oh. Caine won for Hannah and Her Sisters. Wow. I mean, I, I haven't seen Hannah and Her Sisters or A Room with a View out of those other three performers, I probably, honestly, I probably would have given it up to, to Dennis Hopper for Hoosiers. Yeah. I mean, and that's hard to say because all three of them nailed their roles. Yeah, Tom Berenger was a great So heavy great. Oh, movie. absolutely. Maybe that maybe his best role ever. That might be Pro- the, probably, the best Tom Berenger Probably, role, yeah. yeah. I mean, because I don't think he's, I think that's the only time he's ever been nominated for an Oscar. Um, he's another one that popped back up recently because he wasn't, like, I think he was in uh, Inception. Back in the day, and that was like his first big movie in a while. Because he got kind of big with the major league movies and right. Platoon and stuff like that. Um, but yeah. I think I, he was a good looking guy, so he also got into some romance movies. Yep. yep. I remember one, um, it was 90s though, Last of the Dogmen he did with uh, Barbara, oh, Barbara Hershey. Barbara Hershey, yep. You ever see Shattered? I think I've mentioned that to you before with him, Bob Hoskins, and. Uh, I want to well, say maybe maybe I saw it back in the day. I want to say Isabella Rossellini. Oh. Um, it's a really good movie. I'll have to bring it in for you. It's what a really it good suspense movie where you don't find out until the very end what what really happens. And this was before like all like the Sixth Sense and the usual right. suspects and stuff like that. You know, this was one of the originals that did it. Um, and I remember watching it. and I just was like, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> like not at all. I it was on like a USA or something like that one day, and I caught it like halfway through. Right. And I just started watching. It. I was like, wow, this is actually a really good movie. Um. So next week we're gonna do baseball part two. We're gonna do more baseball movies. So I'm gonna have to remember what we talked about already. <laughs> I I have my list of the movies that I mentioned checked off. Oh. So that I'll remember. Um. And then in two weeks we'll do 80s part two, but we're gonna do. Um, best pictures. Best picture nominees of, of each year versus the top five grossing films of each year. Right. And see how close, see how many best picture nominees were actually box office success, successful. Because I'll say, I'll we, say we, we probably, 
could count them on one hand. I was going to say crossover. it's going to be less than one a year because a lot of a lot of times they're like not necessarily independent always, but l- really low budget movies that don't get released a lot in a lot of theaters. Right. Well, I wonder if that's where they start to develop this pattern where you had the big summer blockbusters like we do now, where you get the season where from Memorial Day through the summer they release all these big budget epic movies. Right, through like Labor Day generally. And then around Christmas time they start to introduce the Oscar nominated right. movies. Yep. You know, every so often there's a little sprinkling of some movie that came out earlier in the year. Mm-hmm. That, that makes it like your Gladiator one. Gladiator was an early release. And uh, I guess they, they thought Pay It Forward was going to be the big winner that year, but it didn't, it didn't pan out, so Gladiator ended up winning Best Picture. Right. Um, but that's been our show this week. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Powers. I'm Don Trettler. These, These are, are the, the ones, ones you don't want to miss. You can't fight in here. This is the war room. Here's Johnny. Go ahead. Make my day. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it.